Hi everyone, in this video we'll be looking at hydration reactions. We'll look at what hydration reactions are, then we'll look at the mechanism for alkyne hydration, and we'll also talk about what products are produced from the hydration of alkynes. So hydration refers to addition reactions which involve the addition of water across a double or a triple bond. And it's important to note that we are adding water onto unsaturated hydrocarbons because they have greater reactivity as a result of the large electron density in these bonds. The hydration of an alkene will form an alcohol. However, the hydration of an alkyne will form either a ketone or an aldehyde. As we previously mentioned, alkynes are a form of an unsaturated hydrocarbon and they can engage in addition reactions because of the presence of an electron dense triple bond. Because of this characteristic triple bond which is present in the alkyne, alkynes are what we call strong nucleophiles. This means that they seek out positive charge that exists in nuclei. And here we can see the characteristic CC triple bond which exists in this alkyne, propyne. So we'll be looking at two methods of alkyne hydration with the formation of a ketone and an aldehyde. First we'll look at the formation of a ketone as a result of alkyne hydration. In the first step there's a nucleophilic attack from the triple bond onto a hydrogen ion which is produced in the solution as a result of the dissociation of an acid catalyst. As a result, we end up with the formation of this electrophilic carbocation ion in the 2 position. In this next step, water is now a nucleophile, and as a result, the water will engage in nucleophilic attack onto the carbocation ion that exists in the 2 position, and as a result, it will form a positively charged oxonium ion. From there, hydroxide, presumably formed from a base catalyst, deprotonate the unstable oxonium intermediate and as a result will form an enol intermediate as well as regenerating the catalyst. From here, the enol intermediate can then undergo tautomerization in order to stabilize its bonds. Here we have the movement or the shift of this double bond into this position here in order to form a carbonyl compound. The reason why this is more stable is because oxygen is more electronegative than the adjacent carbon that existed on the enol, which means that it has a better ability to absorb the electron density and stabilize the double bond. Finally, we still have an extra hydrogen that is attached onto the carbonyl. So this then deprotonates and we end up with the formation of a ketone. Now let's look at the formation of an aldehyde as a result of alkyne hydration. We revisit step one to see what is the case for the formation of the aldehyde. And step one really occurs in the same way in that the electron dense triple bond engages the nucleophilic attack of the H+. This is very similar to what we saw in step one for the hydration mechanism that forms a ketone and that it ends up forming a carbocation intermediate. However, let's compare this one with the one for ketone. We notice that the carbocation is now on the one position, whereas previously we saw that it formed on the two position. This is what is going to be significant about the formation of the aldehyde. In the same way that occurred previously, the water is going to have a nucleophilic attack onto the carbocation in the one position in order to form this oxonium ion intermediate, which is then deprotonated again to form an enol, which is then tautomerized in order to form a carbonyl compound and deprotonated, now forming an aldehyde. So to summarize, we know that the hydration of an alkyne will produce either a ketone or an aldehyde. Ketones, however, are formed as a major product, while aldehydes are formed as a minor product, and major and minor products are dictated by Markovnikov's rule. So let's look at how we can apply Markovnikov's rule to determine which one is the major and the minor product. Markovnikov's rule says that the major product is going to be the product of the addition reaction to the more substituted carbon. If we look at the ketone and the aldehyde, what we notice is that with the ketone, the substituted carbon is on the 2 position. And because there are two surrounding carbons, the carbonyl carbon is a secondary carbon. However, with the aldehyde, the carbon is only a primary carbon, as there is only one carbon that is attached next to it. As a result, we can expect that aldehyde will be the minor product, while ketones will be the major product. Let's look at this sample question. The question says, draw the structural formula of products of the following reaction. So what we have here is we have the hydration of an alkyne, as we should expect, but we have a dilute H2SO4 acid catalyst. Now if we're looking at the alkyne position here, we can see that the addition of water can only produce a ketone, and the reason for that is because both of the carbons that are involved in the triple bond are not in a terminal position. 
So what we should expect is we should expect first only one product. This is the ketone product that we should draw as a result of this. It does not matter if the carbonyl compound is here or here, because according to the nomenclature, there will be the exact same compound. In this case, however, we see that both the two position and the one position carbons are involved in the triple bond, and therefore we should expect in this case that we will form a ketone and an aldehyde. So our ketone will look like this. And remember that the ketone is going to be the major product. The minor product will be the aldehyde. And these are the two products that we can draw as a result of this hydration reaction.